This question is about organic acids. Part A. Lactic acid shown below has two functional groups. Lactic acid reacts with bases and with many metals. 1. An aqueous solution containing 1.125 grams of lactic acid is reacted with an excess of magnesium producing hydrogen gas. 2. The excess magnesium is removed, the water is evaporated leaving a white solid A. Part 1. Name the type of reaction of lactic acid with bases and with metals. The type of reaction with lactic acid and bases is known as neutralisation. So we're going to write this on the answer line provided. Then the type of reaction with lactic acid and metals is known as a redox reaction. So we're going to write this on the line below. To get the mark for this question, you must have both reaction types correct. Part 2. Calculate the volume of hydrogen gas produced measured at room temperature and pressure. So we're going to start by working out the number of moles of lactic acid. We're going to do this using the equation triangle mass divided by moles times relative formula mass. So we've been given the mass of lactic acid and that is 1.125 grams. And we're going to divide by the relative formula mass. So the relative formula mass we can start by counting the number of carbons. We've got one, two, three carbons in lactic acid. So we're going to have three times 12. Then we're going to count the number of oxygens. We have three oxygens, so we're going to have three times 16. Then we need to count the number of hydrogens. So the number of hydrogens, we would have three on our far left carbon. We would then have one on our second carbon and then the hydrogen in the OH group. And then we have our other hydrogen in our carboxylic acid OH group. So that's a total of six hydrogens and that makes the relative formula mass of lactic acid 90. That gives us a number of moles of 0 0.0125 moles. Next we're going to work out the volume of hydrogen produced. So we're going to do this using the equation volume over molar volume which will be 24,000 because we're measuring at room temperature and pressure and that will equal moles. So we've not got the volume, we're trying to work that out, so we're going to do moles multiplied by 24,000. But we need to divide the moles by 2, so 0 0.0125 divided by 2 times by 24,000. The reason we've divided by 2 is because there are twice the number of moles of lactic acid than there are of hydrogen. So this gives us a volume of 150 centimetres cubed, which we then write on the answer line provided. To get the two marks for this question, you get your first mark for correctly working out the number of moles in lactic acid, and your second mark for then working out the volume of hydrogen gas. Part 3. What is the empirical formula of the white solid A? Lactic acid, when it reacts with magnesium, will lose a hydrogen, so it will have a negative charge. And it's going to lose the hydrogen on the carboxylic acid group. So that means it's going to have a negative 1 charge. Magnesium has a 2 plus charge, so we're going to have two of our lactic acid groups. So that means the empirical formula of the white solid would be C6H12O6 because that's lactic acid multiplied by 2 and then Mg for magnesium. To get the mark for this question you must have the correct empirical formula written. Part 4. Predict two reactions of lactic acid each involving a different functional group. Do not include reactions with bases or metals. For each reaction, state the type of reaction, the reagents and conditions. Draw the structures of any organic products formed. Let's firstly look at carboxylic acid, which is COOH. The reaction it's going to undergo is esterification. The reagents for esterification are any alcohol, if we use methanol, so CH3OH, 
and an acid, so sulfuric acid, H2SO4. Then we're going to produce an ester. The ester we would produce with lactic acid would be CH3, CHOH, COO, CH3. The ester group is this COO, and it would look like this. C doubly bonded to an oxygen with another oxygen and then two R groups attached either side. Now we're going to look at the second of our reactions. So the reaction we're going to look at is with a secondary alcohol and we're going to look at oxidation. So the reagents for oxidation are potassium dichromate which is K2Cr2O7 and sulfuric acid. Then the conditions would be heat. So it would produce a ketone because the secondary alcohol is going to oxidize and instead of having an alcohol, we're going to have a ketone. So writing this organic product, we would have CH3 brackets CO close brackets COOH. To get the marks for this question, you get your first mark for having the reagents and conditions of esterification, your second mark for having the correct organic product of esterification, your third mark comes from the correct reagents and conditions for oxidation and the fourth mark is from having the correct organic product for oxidation. Part B. In basic conditions, amino acids form anions with the general formula RCHNH2COO-. These anions can act as bidentate ligands. Copper 2 ions can form a square planar complex with anions of the amino acid glycine, where R is equal to H. There are two stereoisomers of this complex, B and C. Part 1. Draw the skeletal formula of the anion of glycine. The skeletal formula for the anion glycine is going to look like this, with our H2N connected to our CH, which is then connected to our COO negative. To get the mark for this question, you must have the correct skeletal formula for the anion of glycine. Part 2. Draw diagrams of stereoisomers B and C. In your structures, show the ligands as skeletal formula. On each stereoisomer, we're going to have a copper and two ligands. So with the ligands, the nitrogen is going to bond to the copper. Then we're going to draw the skeletal ligand. And then we're going to have the oxygen also bonding to the copper. We're going to have the nitrogens at 90 degrees from each other. And then the skeletal ligand we finish off. Then the stereoisomer we will also have the copper in the centre with our four bonding points and we have the oxygens opposite each other and the nitrogens opposite each other. Then we need to draw the rest of the skeletal ligand so our carbonyl group connecting to our nitrogen with our carbon chain, carbon chain carbonyl group connecting to the oxygen. The reason why the complexes look like this is because we're told in the question we're going to have a square planar complex and you have the O minus which has a lone pair that can bond to the copper and a nitrogen on the NH2 group that also has a lone pair that can bond to the copper and so this is the square planar complex structure and the stereoisomers of this complex structure. For this question, you get a mark for each stereoisomer that's correct. So a mark for B and a mark for C. Part 3. Anion ligands of the amino acid alanine, where R is CH3, would be expected to form more than two square planar stereoisomers with copper 2 ions. Explain this statement. The reason for this is because alanine has a chiral centre. To get the mark for this question you must say that alanine has a chiral centre or chiral carbon. The reason why a chiral centre means you're going to have more than two 
square planar stereoisomers is because with a chiral centre, this means that you can have mirror image stereoisomers, so reflections of our square planar stereoisomers, and these will be additional stereoisomers, and therefore more than two. Part C. Methanoic acid is added to water. An acid-base equilibrium is set up containing two acid-base pairs. Suggest a mechanism for the forward reaction in this equilibrium. Your mechanism should use displayed formulae and curly arrows and show all species present at equilibrium. If we start by drawing methanoic acid, so we have our carboxylic acid group and we're going to separate our OH and then we've got a hydrogen as our R group. Then we're going to draw water and water is going to have a lone pair on the oxygen. There will then be a curly arrow from the middle of the lone pair on the oxygen to the hydrogen of the OH group in the carboxylic acid of methanoic acid. A general rule for curly arrows is one in, one out. So then there's going to be a curly arrow from the bond on the OH to the oxygen. That's going to produce C double bond O, O minus, because we're losing a hydrogen, and then our hydrogen R group remains the same. Then we're also going to have O plus with three hydrogens attached to the oxygen. To get the marks for this question, you get one mark for having the correct reactants and products, and one mark for having the correct curly arrows. The acid-base equilibrium that helps with this question is methanoic acid and water. So it produces the equilibrium where we have HCOO- and H3O+. So the forwards reaction of this equilibrium would be HCOOH plus H2O goes to HCOO minus plus H3O plus. And that's what we've drawn in the mechanism here. Part D. Information about monobasic organic acid D is shown below. D reacts by both electrophilic substitution and electrophilic addition. The molecular formula of D is CXHYO2. The mass spectrum of D has a molecular ion peak at MZ 148. The carbon NMR spectrum of D contains seven peaks. Determine and draw a possible structure for D. Explain your reasoning from the evidence provided. The first thing we need to spot with this question is the fact that it has electrophilic substitution. In order for something to undergo electrophilic substitution, it must have a benzene ring. So we're going to jot this down as one of our justifications. Then we need to spot that we've also undergone electrophilic addition. For something to undergo electrophilic addition, it means that it's an alkene. Alkenes have the general bonding, C double bond C. Now we need to work out the molecular formula. So we told it has the general structure of CXHYO2. So we know already that we're going to have a benzene ring and we're also going to have a C double bond C, but we're also told in the question we've got a monobasic acid. So that means we're going to have a carboxylic acid group present. So that means our molecular formula is going to be C9H8O2. Writing or drawing the structure for D, we draw our benzene ring, then we're going to have our carboxylic acid group attached and our alkene group. Now we need to check that we have seven peaks on a carbon NMR spectrum. So if we label the carbon environments, we have one in our carboxylic acid group, two at the top of the benzene and then benzene would be symmetrical so you would have two threes two fours five at the bottom six and then seven on our alkene group so we have checked that we've got seven peaks 
To get the marks for this question, you get one mark for saying that electrophilic substitution means there's a benzene ring. Your second mark comes from saying that electrophilic addition means there's an alkene group. Your third mark comes from writing the correct molecular formula and identifying that you've got a benzene, an alkene and a carboxylic acid group. Your fourth mark comes from drawing the correct isomer of D or the correct structure of D. And then your fifth mark comes from identifying that you have seven peaks on a carbon NMR spectrum.